Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are going to learn how to read the sidewall of a tire. And if there's one thing that I can guarantee, it's that by watching this video, if you bring up the information you learn uh, the next time you're hanging out with your friends, you will be the life of the party. Now, serious statements aside, there's actually some really cool information you can learn simply by looking at the sidewall of a tire. Now, these tires in front of me are the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. They are the original equipment tires that came on my Tesla Model 3 Performance. Uh, it's currently sitting on winter tires as of filming this video. But what we learn in this video is not specific to this unique tire. In fact, it can be applied to pretty much any tire out there. So the next time you're at a Cars and Coffee, you can wander around looking at all the sidewalls of all the tires and determine which tire you think is the best, which sounds like a wonderful way to spend a Saturday. So starting from the very beginning, and many of you perhaps are already familiar with these uh, simple measurements right here, uh, but don't worry, the video will get far less interesting. So starting at the very beginning, you may see a P or an LT before the measurement scale here. And so that P meaning passenger or LT for light truck, light truck tires having a bit more material, uh, stronger sidewalls so that they can carry the higher loads that trucks are designed to carry versus passenger vehicles, which are carrying, you know, the, the biggest cargo component will be the passengers of the car. Okay, so let's break down this 235 over 35 ZR20. And this is perhaps the worst combination uh, of units because this is millimeters, this is percentage, and this is inches. And somehow we as humans have decided uh, that for the vast majority of the tires, this is the way that we want to rank them. So the 235 is the width of the tire from sidewall to sidewall in millimeters. So 235 millimeters wide. 35 is the aspect ratio, so it's a percentage of the tread width. So it means that the tire's sidewall is 35% of the tread's width, which is 235. So 235 millimeters multiplied by 35% gives you 82.25 millimeters for the height of the sidewall. And then 20 is our wheel diameter. So this tire is designed for a 20 inch wheel. All right, so what about this ZR? So we're gonna ignore the Z for now, and this R is actually the tire's construction. So tires are made out of rubber and cord layers called plies, and this R designates that this tire has radial construction. So the plies are 90 degrees, they're perpendicular to the tire's center line. If instead of a letter R there was the letter D, that would stand for diagonal bias, meaning that the plies are at an angle rather than perpendicular to the tire's center line. Next we have this 92Y. So this 92 right here is the load rating. So this is the maximum load that the tire is designed to be capable of carrying. So keep in mind, you of course have four tires on your car, this one individual tire with a load rating of 92 is capable of carrying 1,389 pounds. Now there's quite a wide range of load ratings out there. So you may see as low as 70 on a passenger tire, 739 pounds up to 126 on a light truck tire, 3,748 pounds per tire. Now the single letter after the load rating, this Y right here, designates the tire's speed rating. So this is the maximum speed that the tire was designed to safely reach and maintain. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't go faster than this speed, but the tire was designed to reach and maintain this speed and operate safely. So above this, you could generate too much heat for the tire and you could run into problems. Of course, that's all assuming your tire is in good condition to begin with. You don't wanna be driving 186 miles per hour with a very worn down tire. Now there's quite a long list of these individual letters and what their correlating speed ratings are. I will include some of the more common ones that you may see on your tire, uh, but this is the maximum speed the tire is designed to safely reach and maintain. All right, so now we're going back to this Z right here because you might be wondering why is Y the highest speed rating and not Z? And so at one point Z was the highest speed rating and it just designated anything that could go over 149 miles per hour. Then cars started getting faster, so we introduced different uh, ratings here. So you could have this Y, meaning up to 186 miles per hour, and this Z then became irrelevant. So now it's more of an aesthetic choice to put this on a tire. 
Now this extra load label that you see right here simply means that this tire for its size has a higher load rating and higher air pressures than a standard tire of the same size. So it's designed to hold higher loads than a standard 235 over 35 R20 tire. Next we have the maximum load and the maximum pressure ratings. And so this maximum load here, 1,389 pounds, that's the exact same as this 92 right here. So it is a bit redundant that it lists it, but most people probably don't know what 92 means uh, versus 1,389 pounds. Uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. Maximum pressure is the maximum cold tire pressure, meaning the vehicle is at rest, it hasn't been driving around heating up the tire. This is the maximum cold tire pressure that the tire is designed to contain. Now this is not the recommended tire pressure, so you'll find that uh, perhaps in the door jam or in your owner's manual of what you should actually set your tire pressures to. It will generally not be this maximum tire pressure you see here. So for my Tesla, uh, this says 50 PSI. Uh, the recommended tire pressure is 42 PSI. Next we have the tire composition and materials and this is pretty general information right here but it will give you the number of tread plies as well as what the materials used to make them up are and then the number and materials used for the sidewall plies. So for example just here you can see sidewall ply, one ply and made out of polyester. Now you may have noticed the foam inside this tire and that's actually what this acoustic label is referring to. So a rolling tire causes regions of air pressure to vary within the tire itself. And so these varying air pressure regions create vibration and that vibration is audible and it transmits that vibration to the car. So by placing this foam within the tire, you actually help to reduce that vibration and noise, the primary benefit being that it's a quieter ride. Next we have the tread wear grade. So this number indicates the wear rating of a tire. So the higher this number right here, in this example it's 300, the higher that number, the longer the tread will last. And so the lower the number, the faster you're going to have this tread wear down. Now for example, a tread wear rating of 300 means it will last three times longer than a tread wear rating of 100. 200 would last half as long as 400. But the thing to keep in mind is this rating is manufacturer specific. So you can't compare two different tire brands tread wear ratings. They may have the exact same tread wear rating, but wear at different rates. It's only an internal rating compared to say a 600 will last six times longer than a 100. Next we have the traction grade. So here you can see this tire has a double A. So there are four categories, double A being the highest, A, B, and C, C being the lowest. Now the only thing that this is measuring and giving you information about is wet stopping in a straight line. Now only about 15% of tires get this double A rating, 77% of tires are in the A rating, about 7% with a B rating, and only four lines of tires have a C rating. Now I was curious, what are those four lines of tires? So I did a bit of research and found that two Mickey Thompson street radials were on that list, which are essentially street legal drag tires with basically no tread pattern at all. So it kind of did make sense why they were towards the bottom. They're going for a drag tire, not a tire that's going to have a lot of grip in the rain. Next we have the temperature grade, and this is a measurement of the tire's resistance to heat. So there are only three grades, A, B, and C. A having the greatest resistance to building up heat, C having the least resistance to building up heat, and C being the minimum requirement that all passenger tires must meet. Now you may also see outside or rotation uh, labeled on the outside of a tire and so rotation would give you a direction meaning that's the direction the tire is supposed to rotate when you're mounting it. Outside meaning that this is the outside of the tire uh, with respect to the vehicle. So this will be on the outside of the vehicle and you can tell looking at this tire right here from these larger fat tread blocks that you're going to want this on the outside. So this is good for cornering these fat tread blocks right here and then you have these channels in the center for water of evacuation. 
Now you may also have tires that are unique to one specific vehicle. So Michelin Pilot Sport 4S is a generic tire uh, that could be used on many different vehicles, but this TO here indicating that this was built specifically for Tesla. So this is specific to the Tesla Model 3 performance, and there will be different labels out there for different tires. So, you know, unique aspects uh, that Tesla wanted designed into this tire exactly uh, to fit their vehicle versus, for example, you may see the letter NO in indicating a Porsche tire. So the winter tires that I actually have on my Tesla are NO, indicating that it is a Porsche tire. It's actually designed for the Porsche Cayman GT4, but it happens to be the exact same size and load rating that I need for my Tesla, so it works out great on the Model 3 as well. All right, we're on the home stretch. So here's what we've got left. DOT, meaning that this meets Department of Transportation safety requirements for on-road use. If a tire does not have this on it, it is not legal for use on public roads. Moving right along, we have 4M. This is a plant code, so this is telling the manufacturer where this tire was built. You then have this 7X. Uh, this is a manufacturer code for the tire size. We have another manufacturer code here, which is used to identify the tire. So if in the future they found a defect with a certain batch of tires, they could issue a recall and they would know which tires to recall based on this label right here, knowing when this tire was created, what batch of tires tires it was created with. And then here is actually the timestamp uh, of when this tire was actually manufactured. So 31 being the week of the year and then 18 being the year. So this 3118, meaning this tire was made on the 31st week of 2018. So hopefully this has covered the majority of the markings, the major ones that we will see across all different tire brands. Uh, there will be, you know, unique cases and individual tires out there that have specific markings from their individual manufacturer, uh, but hopefully this covers the major ones. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave those below.